Firstly, I'd like to uh, welcome you all to today's webinar. So I'm your host, Charlie Woods. I head up the Contractor Solution Division at Head Resourcing, a uh, specialist IT change and digital recruitment agency. Uh, and I've been here for the past 19 years. It's my pleasure to also introduce Graham Knox Cowan, who will be delivering today's webinar on how generational differences are impacting your workforce. Now, for those of you who don't know him, uh, Graham is a global talent acquisition leader with just under 20 years of sourcing, recruitment, RPO, and talent acquisition expertise. And that's across multiple industries and regions. He's currently Head of Sourcing with Alexander Man Solutions, and we're delighted to have him here with us today to share his insight on this topic. Before I hand over to Graham, just a couple of housekeeping points to go through. So the session should last approximately 45 minutes. Graham will deliver his talk for 30 to 35 of those, and then we'll take your top three or four questions as time allows. Um, please use the, the Q&A box to answer uh, sorry, to ask those questions. Uh, and you can also use the thumbs up icon to upvote any questions that you're really keen to hear the answer to. Um, also, feel free to get involved in the chat. Uh, so you can use the, the chat function there. It should appear on the right hand side um, and you can uh, chat to each other during the, the session. Um, lastly, the recording will be available in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that will be available on YouTube and we'll let you know when that is up. So with all of that dealt with, it's my pleasure to hand you over to Graham. Thank you so much for Charlie and thank you so much for asking me to be able to come and speak to this as well. So much appreciated. So um, yeah, as, as Charlie said, it's talking about how um, we have multi-generational workforces now and how it is impacting us. Um, and it is a, a topic of conversation that's coming up with a lot of the clients that I work with now, as we find ourselves at a really interesting point in time in that we do have four different generations within the workforce now. Um, I'm not going to ask anybody to identify what one they fall into and giving away ages or anything like that. But um, you'll see the four key ones that essentially are operating within our workforces today. So we have our baby boomers. Um, you know, these individuals are generally retiring a bit later these days tend to fulfill more high ranking positions within organizations um, and how are they motivated? They tend to focus more on individual performance um, driven by their incentive to climb the organizational ladder and how they really um, associate is they, they value job security, loyalty, um, quite operate in a hierarchical structure and in terms of communi communication, they tend to pretend to face to face communication. Um, moving on from that, then we have Generation X. Um, this is the generation that's also known as the latchkey generation. And that what we mean by that is they often return home to a house where both parents were working. Um, this generation saw the arrival of NTV, video games, PCs, um, and they are tending to replace boomers now in managerial positions, um, but certainly are a bit more independent. In terms of their values, they do value work-life balance, flexibility and independence, and they are comfortable with technology, but also value direct communication. Um, and in the spirit of transparency, that is the kind of generation I fall into at the minute. Moving on from that now, we have millennials, um, formerly known as Gen Y. This is the first generation that has grown up with the internet era. Um, they've experienced economic booms, busts, rise of cost of living, and various kind of um, social events. Millennials are the driving force of today's workforce. They're predominantly the largest piece of the workforce now in terms of percentage. They're driven by a sense of purpose, continual learning. They crave interaction, feedback, and collaboration. They prioritize meaningful work. Their career development are collaborative. This um, generation are also very highly tech savvy and they prefer digital communication. Um, and then the final one, which is our Gen Z. So they're now entering the workforce. Um, they're also the most ethically diverse generation and are known as digital natives. Um, they've grown up um, against the backdrop of economic instability, political unrest, huge global events that have been linked to terrorism and also climate crisis. Um, they have a real emphasis on diversity and inclusion and belonging. Um, they look for continuous feedback, are very comfortable with using advanced technology and social media as their ultimate go-to. So to kind of just root us in, these are the, the generations that we are, are really dealing with at the moment and see within the workplace. So why is 
generational diversity in Portman it is really important within the workplace just now um, for several reasons. Um, it brings a variety of perspectives, experiences and skills that can and absolutely enhance the workplace. Um, it enhances performance, innovation and adaptability when these four um, generations work together. So in terms of some of the key reasons for it, you know, enhanced innovation and creativity. Each generation has grown up in different social, economic and technological contexts, leading to unique viewpoints. When these perspectives come together, they can really foster creative problem solving and innovation. They generate a lot of cross-generational ideas, so collaboration between these generations can lead to the blending of traditional approaches with more new, innovative ideas, helps produce solutions that are both innovative and grounded in experience, which is a huge bonus. There's broader skill sets and knowledge base, so the older generations often bring up deep industry knowledge, expertise and a strong work ethic, while the younger generations tend to contribute fresh technological skills, adaptability and contemporary knowledge to offset that as well. And then the knowledge transfer, you know, generational diversity facilitates the transfer of critical skills and institutional knowledge from experienced employees to the more newer ones, which ensures organizational the organization, sorry, have continuity and resilience. We tend to find that this can drive improved employee engagement and retention. So through meeting diverse needs, a workplace that values generational diversity is more likely to offer a range of benefits, opportunities and working arrangements that appeal to employees of all ages. This can lead to higher job satisfaction and greater loyalty across the workforce as well. Mentorship opportunities is another key one. Generational diversity enables mentoring relationships where older employees can offer guidance and younger employees can share new skills, which then leads to creating a supportive environment that enhances engagement across these different generations also. Greater market insight and customer relations. So, you know, really a key one there is understanding the different demographics. So a multi-generational workforce will better reflect the diverse age groups of customers and clients allowing companies to tailor products, services and marketing strategies to meet the needs of a broader audience, ultimately mirroring your customer base. Intergenerational communication is also a great one. So employees from these different generations can effectively communicate and relate to customers of various ages, which improves customer service and builds those stronger relationships as well. Increased flexibility and adaptability. So there has to be an, an adaption to change. You know, these various groups will equip organisations to help navigate that change better. So, you know, older generations may provide stability and continuity during transitions, where younger generations are really the driving force that can be behind embracing the change, particularly when it looks at adopting new technologies or practices, which we know is part of the everyday world at the moment. And resilience is another key one. A workforce which is composed of multiple generations can absolutely draw on a wide range of experiences and approaches, which helps just make the organisation more resilient to market shifts and challenges because you do have that balance brought in through those different experiences. Creating an inclusive organisational culture is a, is a great one as well, you know, promoting inclusivity. So acknowledging and valuing the generational diversity fosters a culture of inclusion with that culture, it will not only enhance collaboration and teamwork, but it also attracts and retains top talent from all age groups, both from other organisations and within your own organisation, creating more retention. And reducing age-related stereotypes. By encouraging the interaction between these different generations, it can help to break down those age-related stereotypes and biases, which again will hopefully lead to more harmonious and respectful working environment. And then strategic decision-making. The balanced decision making process with that diversity can bring a balance to decision making. Younger employees may push for more bold, innovative strategies, while older employees may offer more caution and risk management insights, which again leads to a really well rounded and great strategic decision making process. And then the long term vision. Older generations will often focus on long term stability and legacy, while younger generations may prioritise rapid growth and innovation. But together, it could really help shape a balanced long term vision for the company. So really, with this generational diversity in the workplace, it's not just a matter of fairness or compliance. It is a strategic asset and should be viewed like that. By embracing the strengths of each generation, organisations can then help create a dynamic, innovative and resilient workforce that's much better equipped to meet the challenges of what is a rapidly changing world. 
This diversity drives not only internal growth, but it absolutely will help enhance the organisation's ability to connect and serve a diverse customer base as well. So this is why it, it's really important. But the big one is what we're seeing just now. So how are these generations currently impacting the workforce? Well, it is having a profound effect on the workforce, and I'm sure everybody on this call will be feeling that in some way, shape or form. It is influencing everything that we see in our day to day from workplace culture to communication style, management approaches and employee expectations. And with here, there's kind of eight key ones that we looked at. So, you know, the diverse work values and motivations probably just covered that in the earlier slide where we outlined what each generation values, what motivates them, but also how they like to be interacted with. So, you know, communication style. What we're seeing with, you know, the baby boomers, they tend to prevent face-to-face -face communication or phone calls, whereas Gen X, they're more comfortable with face-to-face -face and electronic communication, but often prefer emails. I am one of those people. Um, our millennials, they really favour digital communication methods such as instant messaging and social media. And then our Gen Z is embracing the most advanced forms of digital communication. So they're often favouring text and video messaging over emails as well. Approaches to technology. So within the, the four different generations, the boomers, they may be less comfortable with new technology, but they are willing to adapt and see the clear benefits. Gen X tend to be more tech savvy and adaptable. You know, that generation has witnessed the digital revolution firsthand. Whereas millennials, they're more digital native who expect technology to be integrated and part of their work seamlessly. There's no question of that. And then Gen Z, they absolutely are taking technology for granted. So they're expecting cutting edge tools and platforms to be in the workplace without question. Workplace expectations, um, you know, the baby boomers are often expecting structured hierarchical environment with clear roles and responsibilities, whereas Gen X appreciate more autonomy and the ability to work more independently. Millennials now are seeing a more collaborative and flexible workplace with opportunities for teamwork, whereas Gen Z, they are really valuing a diverse and inclusive workplace where they can express their individuality and see a path for rapid advancement within the organisation as well. In terms of how we're looking at kind of feedback and management styles, um, so again, the baby boomers really accustomed to annual performance reviews, expect to receive feedback in formal settings, whereas Gen X prefer regular but not overly frequent feedback and value straightforward communication. Millennials are absolutely thriving on feedback and mentorship. They're seeking leaders who are coaches rather than the traditional bosses, somebody that they can look at and see as somebody that's a true leader. Whereas Gen Z, they're valuing frequent feedback, but want it really in short, digestible formats, and they expect it to be delivered through the latest communication tools as well. What impact is it having on the workplace culture? Um, well, the integration of these differences can lead to richer, more dynamic workplace, but it is seen to be also causing friction if not managed properly. So, for instance, the baby boomers' preference for stability may clash with the millennials' desire for change and innovation, and organisations need to look at the culture and how they can manage these different expectations to kind of meet a middle ground. Organisations that are succeeding in creating an inclusive environment that respects and leverages these differences are tending to see better employee, enga employee engagement and innovation across the board now. And in terms of that adaptability and flexibility, companies are increasingly adopting flexible policies. So such as remote working and flexible hours, which was absolutely sped on by the pandemic of a few years ago. This is now catering to the preferences of younger generations. And this flexibility can and will improve job satisfaction and retention, but it is requiring some major adjustments in terms of management styles and expectations. But through cross-generational mentorship programs, these are becoming more popular, where older employees share their experiences, and then our younger ones are providing insights into new technologies and trends to, again, bridge the gap of these generations. And then in terms of leadership and succession planning, as we start to see that early generation of the baby boomers move into more retirement age, leadership roles are becoming increasingly filled by our Gen X and millennials who bring different perspectives on styles of leadership and what their view of company culture is. This transition can lead to significant shifts in organisational priorities, but with a greater emphasis on innovation, diversity and work-life balance, um, leadership and succession planning can be a huge success. So with the interaction of these generational differences, both challenges and opportunities, 
companies that recognise and address these differences will find themselves in a much better position to really harness the strengths of a multi-generational workforce, which again can lead to things such as better innovation, higher employee satisfaction and overall success. So this is how we really see it impacting at the moment within the workplace. Ways to really engage and nurture the diversity in the workplace, so make age diversity a priority. Recruitment teams that are out there should really reflect the diversity that we're looking for. Make sure it fits the brand, it reflects the customer base that you're targeting as well. By making that a priority is a really key one, especially in a lot of the um, diversity work that people are doing now. You know, age is, has always been a huge part, but at this intersect of four different workforce generations, it's even more prevalent. Be flexible, you know, adapt where, how and when employees work to stages of their life. You know, again, we're seeing kind of Gen X and the baby boomers do prefer that kind of structure, whereas our millennials and Gen Y, they want that more flexibility. You know, do they need to be rigid to nine to five? Can they work around it? You know, life events, are they able to work at home? You know, taking time out for doctor's appointments, things like that. So that flexibility is really, really important now. Remove age bias from hiring. So, you know, starting to look at more blind hiring practices. So remove the data, remove images or anything that is an indicator of age from applications, along with any biased language. Some things that people are starting to do is consider first round interviews on the phone without video. So yeah, I have a couple of clients that did have video platforms have actually removed that now um, because they did feel that it was causing some bias um, on both sides where it was maybe, you know, interviewers of, of one of the more recent generations were maybe being a bit discriminative and vice versa. So in removing that, it's actually shifted that as well. So it's how you look at removing that. Communication methods, I think, you know, really talked on um, various communication methods now looking at the style that suits i think it's key to be speaking to people and ask what their preference is is it email is it social media whatsapp instant messaging so um they all look for different ways of communication you know gen x are really wanting it short snappy to the point um you know whereas baby boomers and and gen z maybe want a bit more information than what what they would normally get customizing your benefits is a really key one so it's offering flexible work options now. So, you know, looking for that work-life balance, you know, what arrangements can be put in place like remote working, flexible hours, can part-time work cater to the varying needs? And then also the benefits package is another key one. So it's really tailoring benefits to make sure it's going to meet the needs of the different groups. So again, for example, younger employees might value something like student loan assistance, while older employees might prioritise retirement planning as well. So it's just being aware of those different generations and how you can speak to them. And then, you know, prioritising inclusive retention practices. So, you know, offer career development to all ages. It shouldn't be a barrier at any point. Career development should be out there. So it's training on new technology, maybe for, you know, older generations versus the new ones. It's maybe steeping them more in kind of the culture of the organisation, the history of the organisation. Um, and again, trying to bridge the gap between these, these different age groups. So strategies for integration. Um, integrating a multi-generational workforce effectively does require a really strong strategy that's going to foster collaboration, create mutual respect and understanding across all age groups. So there are some um, strategies here. This is by no means exclusive, but looking at kind of promoting cross-generational mentorship. Um, so looking at reverse mentorship programs, pair younger employees with older colleagues in a mentorship, um, make sure the knowledge flows both ways. Um, you know, younger employees can help upskill with kind of digital skills or the newest technologies that's coming out. Whereas we said already, older employees can help share industry knowledge, experience and leadership advice that those younger generations won't have. And then you've got your traditional mentorship as well, you know, facilitate that. Um, seasoned employees are guiding younger employees through their career development and help bridge the experience gap um, because you do have so much experience within that, that workforce as well. Really fostering an inclusive communication. Um, make sure that the tools you use are flexible. So, you know, the advice would be adopt a variety of communication tools to cater to different preferences, 
email, instant messaging, video calls, social media, but really encouraging teams to be mindful of each other's preferred communication method. So it's really asking what is your preferred communication method? How often do you like that? And, and making sure that we take note of that. And then training in those communication styles. So offer effective communication across the generations. Make sure we're emphasizing the importance of adapting our styles to meet the needs of different age groups and really getting the best buy-in from them. Create opportunities for collaborations. So, you know, structure the teams with a mix of ages and experiences to work on projects. What will happen here is it's going to encourage the exchange of ideas and really leverage the diverse strengths of each generation. And then our intergenerational collaboration platforms. So using different platforms that allow employees to share ideas, knowledge and solutions. So this could include internal social networks within the organisation knowledge sharing hubs or innovation platforms to really drive that buy-in as well. Really encourage a culture of respect and inclusion, which is absolutely key. You know, so you might look at, for instance, you know, bias awareness training. So provide training on being able to recognise and overcome generational biases and help employees understand and respect those different perspectives. And then also inclusive leadership training train leaders to be inclusive, ensure the value of contributions from all generations and address any age-related conflicts or misunderstandings proactively. As in doing that, we'll be able to get more inclusive leaders that are going to be able to speak to the different generations that they may have within their workforce. And then with leadership and management training, I think the key one there is, you know, making sure that they are trained effectively to manage those workforces, focus on adaptability, focus on empathy and understand the various generational needs, be that training, be that communication, interaction, all those different points that have already been touched upon. And then succession planning, which is really, really key as well. So implement succession planning that's going to include mentoring and development opportunities for younger employees while really leveraging the knowledge of older workers. As we said, you know, the kind of the Gen X and the millennials are now the next generation that's going to be taking those um, leadership positions. So how do you harness and foster the experience that the baby boomers have that, that the organisation may start to lose? Really share share a vision and purpose here. So make sure there is a unified company mission. The advice to this would be make sure we're creating a strong, inclusive company mission that resonates with all generations. Make sure the emphasis is on how each employee's role contributes to the overall success of the company and really foster that sense of shared purpose. And then collaborative goal setting, another key one, engage employees of all ages in setting team and organizational goals. In doing that, you're really going to ensure that everyone feels invested in the company's direction and outputs and what they want to achieve and hopefully drive that better buy-in. And then kind of final one is encourage social interaction, which could be challenging in itself in a world where it is a bit more remote and people work a bit virtual. But, you know, it's trying to organise events that encourage interaction across age groups. So that could be team building exercises social gatherings or cross-departmental lunches or activities that can be done virtual as well. So again, just speaking to those different generations and, and how they want to do that. And then employee resource groups is such a key one, you know, so supporting the creation of ERGs, focus on age diversity, where employees can discuss generation, generational issues, share resources and support one another as well. And then really through these strategies and driving the integration of the workforce, and creating a combination of, you know, fostering communication, encouraging collaboration, you know, it's really going to create that culture that values and respects the diversity. And by implementing these strategies, you know, organisations can hopefully harness the unique strengths of each generation, leading to a more productive and harmonious workplace as well. So the benefits of a multi-generational workforce, which I think, you know, is it really spoke upon here. And, and again, these are not the, the, this is not an exhaustive list and a final list, but, you know, diverse perspective and ideas, you know, we can bring varied life experience, cultural backgrounds and viewpoints, you know, which really drives a more creative solution, innovative ideas, and a mix of fresh modern perspectives from younger employees with seasoned insights from our older employees really fosters an environment where diverse ideas can really flourish and help the organization go from strength to strength. Those comprehensive skill sets. So, you know, each generation tends to excel in different skill areas. So for example, baby boomers may have strong interpersonal and leadership skills, 
while millennials and Gen Z often possess advanced technical and digital skills. So this diversity allows for a more comprehensive approach to problem solving and project execution, which can only be seen as a benefit to any organization. And then the knowledge transfer, you know, so in getting our employees that can pass on valuable knowledge and experience to the younger employees, while those younger workers can share up-to-date skills and digital proficiency. This cross-generational exchange really will start to enhance the overall workforce capability. And then into that enhanced problem solving. So with varied approaches, um, you can have a variety of problem solving approaches within the organization. So you might find older employees might rely on tried and tested methods, while younger employees might bring fresh out of the box thinking, for example. But through a combination of these approaches, it can lead to more effective and innovative solutions as well. With increased adaptability and resilience, um, you very find it more likely to be able to navigate change. You know, younger generations will drive the adoption of new technology and practices, while older generations will really provide that stability and continuity, which is absolutely key during a change process as well. And that really will help the organisation gain more of a balance. And through organisational resilience, the mix of experience levels and perspectives will just make the organisation more resilient to various market shifts and challenges, as it will draw on a wide range of experiences and approaches. And as we see just now, there are many market shifts and challenges that happen, what feels like almost on a daily basis. So it's really important to build that resilience within the organisation. Broader market insight as well is a key one. So a workforce that reflects a broad age range is better equipped to understand the needs of a diverse customer base. Um, employees of different ages can really relate to customers in the respective age groups, which improves the customer service and product development as well. Um, you know, that can then move to more tailored marketing and services. So again, these insights within the workforce can inform more targeted marketing strategies, product offerings that appeal to a different age demographic. So a real benefit there as well. And then improved employee engagement and retention, you know, through these things, a workplace that's going to value that diversity is more likely to foster an inclusive culture that will then help employees feel valued and respected regardless of their age. And this inclusivity can really lead to higher job satisfaction and lower turnover rates in an organisation as well. Through enhanced teamwork and collaboration, we can really start to go complementary strengths. So the teams will be composed of different generations. They can then start to leverage each other's unique strengths, leads to more effective collaboration. Um, so, you know, again, for example, older employees may excel in strategic planning, while younger employees might contribute strong technical or creative skills. Um, and then through the teamwork and collaboration as well, you can really drive increased empathy and understanding. So working closely together with different age groups really encourages that empathy and understanding that can help reduce workplace conflicts and also foster a more cooperative environment. Which then hopefully leads to more kind of long term organisational success. So, you know, with success planning, um, a multi-generational workforce will help ensure smooth succession planning. Experienced employees can help mentor the younger employees for leadership roles, ensuring that their essential knowledge and skills and culture is preserved over time for the organisation, which will then lead to sustainable growth. So the combination of a long-term vision from older employees and the drive for rapid growth from younger employees can help contribute to a more balanced, sustainable growth strategy for the organisation. And then final one there is just increased organisational appeal in terms of going out to market to attract talent. Companies that are seen to embrace generational diversity are more attractive to a wider range of potential employees. This broad appeal can help attract top talent to your organisation across a different age range groups, enhances your overall talent pool. And then corporate reputation. It's been seen that organisations that are actively promoting and managing a multi-generational workforce can really enhance their reputation as an inclusive and progressive employer, which is really beneficial when it comes to branding and employee recruitment as well. Uh, you know, so with in, in conclusion to that bit, then really, you know, a multi-generational workforce is a valuable asset. It is going to bring together the strengths of different age groups that it will help drive and create a dynamic, innovative and resilient organisation. And by leveraging different skills, perspectives and experiences of all these generations, organisations can really strive to achieve greater creativity, adaptability and long term success as well. So looking forward, I mean, what does the next five years have? And I think it's probably really difficult to, to pinpoint that, as we've seen probably if we were to ask 
five years ago what the next five years would look like. None of us would probably have guessed it. But some of the key things that we are seeing and how we should be preparing um, for this. First thing is, is obviously changing leadership and management styles. There has to be an adaption to flexible leadership now. Um, different generations have varied expectations of leadership styles. You know, the younger generations are preferring more collaborative and flexible leadership, while older generations might value the more um, structure and hierarchy. Leaders now will need to adapt to the different styles to meet expectations and really foster environments that are accommodating. And then again, it's focusing on that mentorship and reverse mentorship, which is really, really key how you transfer those skills um, from the more experienced workers to the younger generation to keep instill those methods of working within the organisation. Technology and digital transformation is, is huge um, and will continue to be huge. So it's bridging that digital divide. Younger generations, as I've said, they are digital natives now, whereas older employees might struggle with new technologies. So companies really need to think about how they're going to invest in continuous digital education and training, ensuring that all employees are comfortable and capable with the new tools and foster that digital inclusivity as, as uh, we'll see technology is going to continue to evolve at all points. So it's how you keep up with that. And then the utilisation of various tools. So, you know, make sure we're looking at how you're going to continue to integrate tools and platforms that cater to a wide age range and balance, make sure we're balancing advanced features with user friendly interfaces. Continuing to evolve work culture and values is a key one as well. The work life balance being the top of the list. So again, different generations have different expectations regarding work life balance. Millennials and Gen Z at the moment are prioritising more flexible and remote working options, while older generations are really valuing more traditional work structures. Um, organisations are going to need to think about the variety of work arrangements to accommodate the different preferences. And certainly a lot of clients I work with absolutely have that in place and they're looking at stage return to offices or, you know, flexible working, you know, maybe asking people to come in one or two days a week as well. And then creating purpose driven work. So, you know, younger generations are looking to seek out more purpose driven work. Um, so companies need to focus on more things like social responsibility, creating mindful work experiences to attract and retain younger talent as they look at more kind of, you know, social economic projects, looking at climate change. There's there's just different things that the younger generations are looking for now um, that we need to think about building in. Human resource management and policy changes is a key one. So touched on it, kind of those tailored benefits and compensation. So it's really thinking about what benefits package needs to be offered now to cater um, to a wide range of needs. So that can come from retirement planning and healthcare for maybe older workers to more student loan repayment and career development for the younger employees, while conflict resolution and communication is a key one. Um, so as the diversity increases, so too does the potential for misunderstanding or conflicts. So HR departments really need to start to think about implementing training programs that's going to address generational differences and help promote effective communication across those age groups. And then economic and demographic shifts is, is going to be a key one as well. So it's the ageing workforce. So as said, as the baby boomer generation continues to age, companies may face challenges that's going to be related to knowledge transfer and succession planning. So retaining older employees or encouraging phased retirement plans may help mitigate these issues. And then there's a shift in the workforce composition. So Gen Z is now becoming the larger part of the workforce and their preferences and work style are going to increasingly shape the organisational culture and practices. And HR departments will really need to kind of focus on that as well. And then with employee retention and talent acquisition, as said, you know, it's creating customised career paths now for retention. So looking at various different development paths that cater to these different expectations and offering opportunities for continuous learning and advancement at all stages of an employee's career. And then with the branding to attract and retain talent from all generations, organisations will need to start to emphasise their commitment to diversity, inclusivity and career development in their employee branding efforts as well. So the continued integration of a multi-generational workforce is really going to necessitate significant um, adaptions within leadership, communication, technology use, and human resource practices. Companies that are successful in navigating this and harnessing the strengths of each generation um, and create that inclusive environment will find themselves better positioned to thrive in the evolving workplace landscape as well. 
And then really just to kind of finish um, what we're saying here, multi-general, it presents both challenges and opportunities. Organisations that can successfully harness the strength will create you know, a more dynamic, innovative and inclusive work environment. And by understanding and addressing the distinct needs and contributions of each of the cohorts, companies can then enhance employee satisfaction, collaboration and overall performance. And then the next generation that we see coming um, is Generation Alpha, um, which is 2013 onwards. Not much is known about them just now, I would say, but if I go by my own kids, um, they're being dubbed the TikTok generation. So on how we kind of manage that next workforce, um, unfortunately, I have no guidance at the minute, but um, I'm sure it will start to take shape and form in its own time. Um, and at that, Charlie, I think that's the key bits covered now. Excellent stuff. Thanks very much for that, Graham. That was uh, that was great. Um, we do have time for a couple of questions, and I've seen some pop up. So, uh, going by the votes, uh, first question for you, Graham. In terms of blind hiring processes to avoid age bias, do you think we're heading to a point where people aren't putting dates on CVs to show when they worked somewhere, the, the to and from dates, because uh, you can currently take your date of birth off your CV, but your employment dates or years you're at school are a bit of a giveaway. Yeah. How how do you see that going at the moment? You mentioned that uh, yeah. you can sanitize CVs to an extent. You, you, you can sanitize to an extent. And I think that's still a big barrier just now. So I think, you know, where, for example, if, if people are, you know, going to work in financial services where criminal record checks need to be completed, the dates are absolutely essential. So I think there is some barriers to that that will remain just purely driven by various processes and organisations. But um, I think where possible, we, we are seeing some people take it off, but it really depends on the role. We're not at that stage yet where people are taking it off. So you're right, you know, people can deduce um, kind of, you know, when their first job was to now. So I would still say we're a wee bit off removing a lot of that, to, to, to be fair. But I think the job of recruiters is, you know, having those conversations. It's then passing it to the hiring manager. I would say, how do recruiters anonymise it a bit more? And that's what we are trying to do now. And certainly a lot of clients is start to remove that information. You know, it's just letting them see, probably as you move more to a skills-based approach of hiring as well, like highlighting the skills and experiences that they've got, doesn't necessarily need dates. So I think recruiters, um, TA plays a really important role in helping anonymise that a bit more before it goes to the hiring manager community. Excellent. Okay. Um, and in terms of uh, vision and purpose, so uh, vision and purpose is quite a, a key factor for employees these days. What's the best way to define and create or change a shared vision and purpose? That's a, a big one for you. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, so I think um, some of the stuff that, that even we're doing AMS is we're actually asking our recent employee um, survey, we asked them, you know, how do they feel about our objectives and our aims as an organization and there was a, a bit of ambiguity around they didn't really understand it what was it because I think sometimes you know employees might think is that you know the commercial performance of an organization which it might be to some generations but you know what we are seeing and certainly with some candidates that we speak to now that's maybe more millennials and beyond is they want to know like you know what is our um, social responsibility, how do we partner in, with d and I outside of the organisation? So this is where I think some organisations are starting to, to pivot towards that, whereas historically it was maybe, you know, how do I make a commercial impact to the organisation? How do I feed into that? It, it is very, very different now in how you kind of, of start to move that away. So it is highlighting more around some of the things that they're doing within the community and maybe charity work that they're doing because, you know, millennials and, and particularly beyond that that's the kind of things they want to see. What is the corporate responsibility um, of the organisation as well? So as I would say in a lot of clients that I see now, it's, it is starting to really seriously change in how they kind of, what that proposition is and how they're sharing that vision externally as part of that talent attraction method as well. Excellent. Okay. We've got time for hopefully two more. Uh, so hybrid working is a key consideration for all businesses. How do businesses accommodate the desires of different generations? So I, I think it would it's often flexible working. And I think a lot of clients I see do offer that, you know, where they're encouraging people to come in maybe one or two days a week, sometimes three, um, but not enforcing that. And I think, you know, certainly 
would be as well. We have, you know, people that maybe can't come in for nine o'clock because they've got the school run. That's okay. They're maybe coming in at half nine. They're leaving a bit earlier because they need to get home. I think it's it's really just being open to that. And, and I think as much as we're looking at those return to office pieces, you know, just a few years ago, nobody was in an office and, and it was okay. So I think it's slowly adapting back. And, you know, I speak to a lot of people that really want to be back in the office because they crave that structure and they crave that human interaction. Um, whereas there's other people that, that have no intention to, they want to go back into the office. So I think it really is, is just, you know, looking at your workforce um, and, and just asking the question and, and seeing, you know, driving that down to the hiring manager, you know, pool and letting them manage their teams effectively. I think what what we're seeing that's not working well is, is organisations that are maybe saying you will return. That's where you're seeing a lot of candidates or certainly we're speaking to candidates, you know, what's the reason for coming back? I'm not being offered flexibility. We're actually seeing that as a bigger reason for leaving more than anything else at the minute yeah. um, across a lot of our portfolio. So it's trying to allow that flexibility wherever yeah. possible. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. And we'll see if we can manage one more. Uh, how can you break down barriers with older generations to adapt to change in new models of working? Do you know, I, I think it's probably back to that. It's the reverse mentorship piece. Like, I think a lot of it is, I think a lot of it's fear. Um, you know, and like I'll say sometimes, like I have the fear, even as a parent with the technology now, my kids talk to me about stuff and I just genuinely don't understand it, um, which terrifies me a wee bit. So I think from a workforce perspective, it's probably leveraging the different generations and helping them understand and you know I think when they're both working together it's just helping educate and show how it works and explaining what the impact of it is you know I'm probably one of these people that if we're going to do something I need you to walk me through and show me why we're doing it and explain the impact how is it going to be positive um, and if I get that I, I'm absolutely on board with it and adapting to change so I think that's what we need to just do a bit more is just encourage that collaboration encourage people to talk and share those experiences um, because I think that's how we'll, we'll slowly bring people on the journey because um, technology is going to evolve, right? it's going to change, it's not going anywhere. Um, so I think it's how we, we bring people on that journey because your younger generations just adapt it so quickly. Um, you know, where even with AI, I mean, chat GPT took me a while to just really understand how that works. So, um, but in, in speaking to people that get it and it's part of their everyday, it's really helped my understanding just as an example of that as well. So taking the time to, to go into time. detail. And yeah, and then not put ourselves through. under pressure to think we must learn it quickly, like make it part of the, the evolution and the journey. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, that is uh, our time up. So thank you all for attending and a massive thank you to you, Graham, for sharing no, you for your me. knowledge uh, and insight on that topic. That was great. Um, this is the first of our, our Talking Talent Acquisition webinar series. There's a, a number more to come over the next few months and you can get signed up um, today join or pop uh the links in the chat but yeah thanks again graham that was great thank you